Why does it feel like every swearing theory and the reasons you should or shouldn't do it never really quite hit the mark? I think it's because it's a deep topic that demands deep answers. And most answers start feeling like an itch that you just can't quite reach. Today we have Jordan Peterson, Jonathan Pajot, Joe Rogan, Carl Jung, The Bible, Michael Jones, and Jocko Willink here to help us scratch that itch, or at least try to, and scratch the surface of the iceberg of swearing. Let's dive right in. Yeah. Okay. I'm watching too much Fargo. Today we're going to be talking about swearing. I figured I'd uh, whip up a quick video for you guys. I've been thinking on this a little bit lately. What is swearing? What does it mean to cuss? What's a cuss word? What's a bad word? Um, just think of the words that we use when we swear, when we cuss. They belong to either uh, the highest or the lowest, right? They're, they, they belong to the world of extremes, uh, to the hidden, uh, to the profane or to the sacred, to the baser animal-like qualities or the highest, most hallowed and revered things. Revered things. Um, it wouldn't make sense for me to stub my toe and say, oh, fried eggs or sticks or you know, monkeys in a tree. I don't know. It wouldn't make sense if I'm trying to curse, if I'm trying to cuss. It, it makes sense to reach for the highest or reach for the lowest. Now, what happens when we swear is we are trying to express something which is outside of the system of meaning. It's far more complex than this, but the easiest way to look at it is when you swear, the majority of the time you're grasping, you're reaching for the highest or you're reaching for the lowest. I cannot think of a swear word that doesn't surround the toilet, the bedroom, or religion. Try. Hmm. But the question is, why? Because hmm. this part in the middle is the coherent communal system of meaning. But sometimes we have experiences, uh, which is violence or like when you stub your toe or you get super angry and you don't find a word within the system of meaning to express what you're dealing with so what you'll do is you'll you will go into the cast out like into the cast away and bring it into the system of meaning to express the disjunction so you're basically expressing disjunction you're expressing like this makes no sense. I can't express. I can't express it, and so I need to go into the hidden part. Uh, he need to bring out the hidden part into public to express the disjunction. So that's why it's all fecal. It's all sexual. It's all that. Now, what we do when we use religious words is is that we're confusing the top and the bottom. This is my theory. Let's just do this one by one, actually. So the same part of your brain that lights up when you see uh, the enemy, an intruder, a predator, right? I believe the original study was with uh, monkeys, I think. Primates of various sorts, like vervet monkeys. Whenever they saw a jaguar or a tiger, something like that, they that part of the brain would light up. The same part of the brain that lights up when we cuss, when we swear. Monkeys have predator Alarm cries. They have one for things that attack from the sky. They have one for like cats that climb into the trees to get you. And they have one for uh, things that rustle through the grass, snakes. Each of those produces a distinctive alarm cry. And so that's the same alarm, that alarm cry system is the same system that we use to swear with. We use short guttural words. So they're archaic words because short words tend to be very, very old. And so that's, and we have a separate system that utters those sorts of vocalizations. And that's the system that's disinhibited in Tourette's, which is why people with Tourette's swear. And so when you curse the professor for giving you the bad grade, you are using the same bloody linguistic system that your ancestors used to categorize snakes in the grass or predators that sweep, swoop down from the sky. That's very, very interesting. 
so essentially you're you're launching a counterattack, so to speak like you 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 stub your toe and you on a on a rock and that rock is the intruder the predator the enemy that just harmed you right uh, in this very primitive way uh, you trip over a log and you you chip your toenail blood's all over the place whatever that part of your brain lights up it responds to the predator to the enemy and you reach for a verbal weapon so to speak you want to reach for the highest thing sometimes this is an exaggeration sometimes well we'll get into that um so to the one of the most popular swear words the f-bomb uh, is it, it originally meant to plow or to strike or thrust or pierce right uh, it came from and, and there are multiple theories right but one of the most plausible ones in my opinion is uh, that it, it, it came from the old high germanic word flog or another germanic word meaning to strike or thrust now this one in particular flog or however you say that is to plow as in to plow a field and this is supported in part by uh, Carl Jung's Psychology of the Unconscious, a study of the transformations and symbolisms of the libido, in which he discusses the, quote, primitive play of words and the phallic representation of the plow. We won't delve too deeply into that, but I, I believe that uh, sometimes it is a counterattack of, of a sort. It's like you're reaching for the the strongest words you can come up with to uh, to either um, attack this thing that's coming against you or to I mean you, you say something like crap right or the more um, harsh word for that and you're you're literally flinging mental poo symbolic poo at your enemy I mean that's basically what it is um, but it can also be something like defiling the sacred so the three word combo g d it i'm trying to avoid the actual uh, cuss words i know that's very offensive for a lot of people so i'm going to do my best i can't promise that i'm going to avoid all of them but that three word combo g d it can just as easily be something like desecrating the holy place if you say it for example you notice that your intention is anger or bitterness against god right it's kind of this shaking your fist against god uh, you're probably saying that as an f u of a sort to god some people will mix in uh, the highest things they can think of with the lowest things they can think of or the most hidden things right when we're talking about the the hidden things um uh, you know we're talking about like well there's a lot of uh sexual cuss words right there's a lot of uh, bathroom related cuss words and then that brings us to shock value and exaggeration sometimes it's an exaggeration i almost said just an exaggeration and that would have been a big mistake right is it ever just something um bringing the lowest or hidden base or shameful things into the open um, there's a reason we don't go out with no pants on or just drop our drawers in the middle of a flight or something like that um, certain things are meant to stay hidden and when we swear sometimes the purpose is to uh, elevate this lower thing for shock value or to exaggerate in a profane way or to fling the lowest most disgusting things that we can think of at uh, this intruder or this enemy whatever it is and then sometimes it's expressing the inexpressible uh, we want to reach outside of the of the system of meaning in order to to express something which is beyond expression and so we'll reach up and we'll reach down and we'll mix them together and so we create this this thing um, but what it does, I mean, obviously, the reason why we shouldn't swear, especially not use the religious words, is exactly because we're desacralizing. We're we're participating in 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 desacralization when we're doing that. We're we're basically taking pearls and throwing them in the mud. We're taking the highest thing and we're confounding it with the lowest thing. Even if it is something as simple as stubbing your foot on a rock or something. Um, the way you feel in that moment is inexpressible, 
right? You, you stub your toe badly enough and you're going to reach for the most extreme words you can imagine to encapsulate and to communicate what you're feeling in that moment, right? Whether you're reaching up for the highest or you're reaching down to the lowest, right? Just think of that for a second. What's at the very bottom? What's the most disgusting? What's the most reviling thing, hidden thing that sometimes you bring up into the world, into the, the, um, into the open? And you speak out because of this enemy, this intruder. And then there's something like prayer or an invocation. Sometimes you utter a word that could be considered a cuss word as a prayer, I believe. Right? I think this is probably a rare form of swearing, and I don't know that you really call it swearing, but if you nearly get in a wreck and you instinctively say, Jesus, Jesus Christ, I think that that for many people is, um, it's kind of like, okay, you almost, you, you almost run into that semi-truck. That semi-truck is the enemy, the intruder, the predator, so to speak. And that same part of the brain um, that uh, deals with predators lights up and you say Jesus I don't think you're flinging the word of Christ at this semi truck as like a verbal spear or javelin I think that that's more like an invocation misguided or not you're reaching for the highest thing you can think of maybe for protection or requesting protection or something like that and I think when some people say uh, GD they actually want God to damn the thing that they're chucking that word at. But how does it hurt you? And I think this is very important because I think that there is a way to use these words that is not harmful to the person or to others. And yet there are many, many ways to use these words in a harmful or very least unhelpful way. How do they hurt us? There's actually a lot to unpack here, uh, but I want to keep this video relatively short. I might do a complete video on this at a later uh, point in time, but to give you a start, it has something at least to do with truth or lack thereof. Okay, and so that's why we shouldn't do that. Um, the reason why it's, it's a dangerous thing to bring out the, the bottom things up is also because that this stuff at the bottom, right, This all the dark stuff, if you bring it into public, like you said, it's destroying the world. Like it literally will destroy the world. Like if you shit in, like if you take a crap on the on the kitchen table, you will destroy your reality. Your reality <laughs> will not hold together if you start doing things like that. And so as you do it orally, like the way you said, you br you're bringing this chaos. You're kind of like, you're basically like pulling this chaos up into the world and you're kind of participating in its destruction. So think about the truth. What? What does truth do? The truth shall set you free, right? Even someone like Richard Dawkins, I heard the other day say that he believes that that's, that's a real thing. That's true. The truth shall set you free. In a conversation, I think, with Jordan Peterson, like uh, Jonathan Paggio, Jordan Peterson, uh, Verveke, like they're all going to agree with that statement. The truth shall set you free. But what about the other end of that, right? What do lies do? Well, if the truth sets you free, then lies, they ensnare you, and they, they trap you, they, they enslave. Think about a pathological liar. What do they do? They weave this web of lies and deceit, and ultimately, I think typically, they get trapped in uh, the web of their own making, like a fly. And many times, the words that we choose, they're basically lies when you think about it, many of the swear words, the cuss words. If you're reaching up to the highest, to the name of God, the very essence of God, that's what the name is, right? That's, that's the essence, the character of God. The, this is the, the summum bonum, the, the, the highest or ultimate good. And you bring that down to the lowest, pairing it with the disgusting baser words or vile or bitter or violent thoughts as you use the Lord's name in vain, so to speak. Uh, in some sense, you're making this statement that this highest thing is or belongs to or uh, should be subject to the lower things or even the lowest things. 
So when a person shakes their fist at God, they're subjecting the highest to human judgment at the very least, right? Saying God is unworthy or unjust or sadistic. You hear that oftentimes with the what you call it, the problem of evil. And this is a kind of um, joining heaven with earth in an unholy way, I guess you could say. And there's deceit at the heart of that, um, lies at the heart of that. And those lies, of course, entrap, ensnare, hold you back from the best life has to offer. And then there's a lot of common sense stuff to think about as well, you know, in many um, public settings or in many social scenarios, um, using profanity, using swear words, cuss words, is automatically going to dumb you down. I listened to a podcast. It was a conversation, you know, normal podcast. There was a conversation going on between two people and they were swearing so much that I just said to myself, man, this sounds ridiculous. It just sounded, it sounded completely ridiculous. Mm -hmm. I heard this podcast and I just said to myself, man, these people sound stupid mm -hmm. with so much swearing. And some people like, for instance, Joe Rogan, he swears, he does it at the right time yeah. and it has comedic impact or it has value when he does yeah. it. So, so that's understandable, but I've heard people that they just, it's, it's just, it doesn't, it ends up having no impact other than just to make you say, this person's not very smart. Right. Right. It's going to make you sound less intelligent. It depends on the circumstances, depends on the people that you're hanging out with, because it can have a different effect as well. And that brings us to the next section. Can swearing be beneficial? It can have um, a very, what would you call it? It can make you seem more honest. I think that's one of the best ways to put it. And in some sense, you are you are being more honest and out in the open. Many, if not most people, at least swear sometimes. And if you are just doing it right off of the bat in some way, you're going to be perceived by many people as more uh, down to earth and open and honest, right? But you've got to, the situation dictates you really have to be able to um, use some uh, uh, good judgment on when it's right or okay or um, acceptable or wise to use these stronger words. I think there is a time and a place. Have you read anything about the science of swearing? No. Do you know that there is a science of swearing? A science? Yes, it's pretty interesting stuff. Oh. Swearing uh, in increases pain tolerance. And there's an interesting experiment. You know, the standard way they do pain tolerance, they have people stick their hand in a bucket of ice and water, mm -hmm. and you see how long they can keep it there. The people who say, fuck, shit, can keep it there much longer than people who are not allowed to swear. What about noises? What if they just go, ah, ah. No, it was swearing specifically. Mm, so they've tried noises and swearing? Yeah, and swearing so it may one? be, you know, when you, uh, if you're hammering a nail and hit your thumb. Yeah. You use one of those words, that's a good strategy. That's interesting because I almost always do that. So that's what that is? But that's, yeah, and it's interesting. Mm. It's coming, there's a different part of the brain that, mm. that manages that. It has different emotional content. Yeah, it flavors language. Yes. I, I like them. I'm a big fan of the swears. What do, you, do you think that that is a universal thing? I mean, it obviously seems is to be, language It seems wise, to be universal. Right? Seems to be universal. Yeah. So in, does every language have... Yes. They all have swears. Yeah. Every language has taboo words, swear words. Wow. Yeah, it's universal. That is really interesting. Yeah. Asian languages, European yeah. languages, yeah. all of them, huh? Yeah. Wow. Huh. So th that <clears throat> that would, at least in my brain, seem to indicate that there's like some use for that. Yes. Well, there are probably many uses. One is this thing of uh, modulating pain. One is an, a social bonding, mm. you know, forming some community. Yeah, that's how I kind of use it. Yeah, I think, right. I think when I swear in front of people, I'm testing them out. Yeah. Like, you freaking out if I say fuck? Because <laughs> if you are, I can't talk to you. Right. Like, you're too much work. Right. You know? <laughs> You know what I mean? Like I know you, exactly what If you're, you're talking doing. to someone in every other word, like, well, I w really wish you wouldn't use that language. Well, okay. You, there's so much work to do here. I can't, I know exactly can't hold your hand, saying. dance through this garden. Right. Yeah. The, it's, um, it's to me also, like, I hang around with a lot of people that swear a lot because mm -hmm. I hang around with professional comedians and right. fighters, and there's a lot of... Uh, swashbuckling freewheeling type of individuals involved in those pursuits and 
see even in the scriptures, like for Christians, there are a number of cases. I shouldn't say a number of cases. There are a few ca cases. I think Paul uses a swear word uh, at one point, and uh, I think one of the prophets. There's probably more in there, but I haven't uh, dug in too deeply into that. But yeah, there's a lot of common sense things that I won't get into now as well. But I will let this guy dig into it a little bit more. Is it inherently wrong for Christians to use swear words? I don't think so, and here's why. A lot of Christians assume swear words are inherently evil. Merely saying one is like uttering a dark spell. And there's no biblical support that words we deem as culturally bad are just inherently evil. We need to ask ourselves, is it more of a sin to call someone a moron, to actively degrade and demean them, or to say something like, Damn, I stubbed my toe. If you think the latter is just as bad or worse, just because I said the word damn, then you need to ask yourself what is inherently bad about that word. In truth, there's nothing bad about saying certain words. What makes them bad is circumstances, context. If you're around someone who doesn't like swear words, use common courtesy and don't use them, similar to the idea that is taught in 1 Corinthians 8. But there might be times you need to use harsh language to really get someone's attention. The prophet Isaiah was not shy about using harsh language to get Israel's attention. So in reality, it's about the circumstances, not the words itself. There's nothing inherently wrong about using swear words. But for Christians in particular, there are a few Bible verses that you might find interesting on the subject. Okay, Philippians 4, 8 says, Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable. If anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think on these things. I think that's a solid verse um, related to the subject. And then even more specifically, we have Ephesians 4.29, which says, Let no unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for building up the one in need, and bring it, bringing grace to those who listen. Now, the, that word, the original Greek word for unwholesome, is rotten, uh, useless, corrupt, right? So don't let any corrupt word, any useless word, or rotten word, escape your mouth, basically, right? Um, and only what is uh, helpful for edification, for building each other up building up the one in need and bringing grace to those who listen. That is, I think, a, a good go-to for people who believe in the Bible. So what would be consider, considered corrupt or unwholesome words? Obviously, that's for each person to determine on their own, but I would say there's probably an objective truth here. And hopefully we can all figure out what that is. Because my this is my theory on words. I believe that they either bring life or they bring death. And in, in actuality, they bring both life and death. Every single time you speak a word, it's going to bring life of some form and death of some form. Um, depending on the situation, right? If you're... If I'm encouraging my wife because she does an admirable thing, I'm building her up. I'm, I'm speaking life into her. I'm, I'm building up her confidence and simultaneously uh, tearing down and bringing death to her lack of confidence or her unconfidence or uh, maybe her fear as well, whatever it is. That's just how words work, and they're very powerful. And I think that's all I have to say on the subject. Hopefully that wasn't too long. But yeah, thanks for watching. Appreciate you guys. And I am looking forward to um, putting out more content, probably more content like this. I'm trying to make the process quicker. Um, I'm going to be doing, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be uh, publishing some videos like this where I, I don't put a ton of editing into them. I just want to uh, share something that I've, been thinking on with you guys that I think could be helpful. Um, but I'm also going to continue to do my usual videos as well because uh, I think those are helpful and necessary and fun as well. They're just more time consuming. But uh, if you enjoyed this, um, please subscribe. Um, subscri subscribing is incredibly helpful, by the way. I mean, you know, people always talk about, oh, I, you know, only 
thirty percent of our uh, subscriber, our, our watchers, our our viewers are actually subscribed. I could definitely say the same thing, um, something along the, the, those lines. I don't remember the exact um, percentages, but um, if you're if you haven't subscribed yet, uh, just know that that tiny little click, that tiny little vote, goes a very long ways and helps the channel out a lot. If you want to support uh, this channel and and what we're doing here, uh, please subscribe and hit the bell. Uh, throw a like in there and a comment or two. Comments are super helpful. Uh, you're basically feeding the algorithm. You're, you're, you're casting your vote and saying, hey, this is interesting or this is valuable. And um, uh, that's the way the algorithm takes it and, and will rank me higher and uh, bring in more viewers as a result. So if you want to spread uh, this message and messages like these, um, yeah, please do that. And uh, yeah, that's all I have for today. Um, again, thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next one.